It's been 12 years since Jagex added a global PJ timer throughout the entire wilderness, and PKers all throughout RuneScape are in disagreement on whether this is a good or bad thing for the game. Today, I'm going to be exploring the new wilderness after the update and see if anything has changed as far as activity and PK locations go. But to start off, I want to test off the PJ timer against PVMers. I've always camped the 2200 worlds, and in my videos, typically, it's been pretty hard to do this with monsters knocking you off the kill every single time they run within aggro range. But now, that's changed for the better. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, just remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll pick one viewer who leaves a comment to win a pair of Dragon Claws. Now then, let's just get right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy. I decided to start off by hunting people that were doing wilderness bosses. Usually it's pretty hard to get these guys because there's so many NPCs around that will knock you off the kill, but now that PJ timers have been changed, you can just kill them freely and no monsters will hit you off. I love it. The first thing this guy says is thanks Jagex. He knows that the only reason I'm up here is because they've changed the PJ timers and it's going to be a lot harder for him to get his Callisto KC. Also, we got a couple hundred K, nothing crazy, but I promise this video is about to get intense. When I went back to hunting, I decided to go to Venonatus this time. The loot table here is really good and I should be able to PJ right off the spider. But as you guys can see, this is really glitchy. For some reason, the spider took the kill back from me and it was almost like super immune. It was taking no damage. And I'm going to just show you guys what happened next because I don't even know what's going on. This has got to be a glitch. Okay, after like four or five minutes, I was finally able to get back on the kill. I'm not sure how this happened, and the spider is still alive. This guy didn't even end up killing it. For some reason, its defense went to like infinity, and he just couldn't do any damage. But I'm back on the kill now, and the spider is not hitting me anymore. Okay, that was pretty easy. We ended up getting him with an Ancient Godsword spec. Didn't even need the Blood Splat proc in order to finish him off. And his supplies are pretty drained from Venonatus itself. But yeah, if you guys can tell me what the hell happened here, please let me know because there's definitely some mechanic flaws in Venonatus when it comes to these new PJ timers. My biggest mistake when trying to record this video was to think that people would actually be PVMing in the wilderness on the day of a no PJ timer update. So I decided to go and do some solo PKing because all the PVM bosses were pretty empty and there was a lot of people PKing at the altar. Alright, that's our first Aram's kill of the new PJ update. This guy here was thinking way too hard. I don't know why he was hugging the trees and trying to go for a log. All he had to do is run to level 30 and teleport away, which is like 5 steps south. But yeah, there we go. 23.9 mil. 
Since NPCs won't hit me off kills any longer, I decided to try and use the spellbook swap method with the 99 magic cape to try and lock down a couple kills. I found this guy named Andro, yeah, he was up at the altar once again, and I did quite a bit of damage and he started to make a run for it. Okay, we've got him frozen. All we gotta do to lock down this kill is use the 99 mage skill cape, change to regular spells, cast one teleblock on him, and then use it again to go back on ancients now that none of these NPCs will hit us off. <laughs> Okay, so let me get this straight. Instead of running away when he was unfrozen, he decided to randomly AGSG mow me. Why was this guy even potted? Why was he expecting to hit that? And how did I end up once again respawned with no max gear? If it's not HKers, it's RNG. Oh man. We gotta rebuild this now. We're gonna go do some death matches. Okay, I found this guy named Watermelon. He's gonna give me 435 mil collapse. We're gonna do a 500 mil death match. We're both gonna double D claw spec, and whoever ends up killing the other person is gonna end up with 500 mil profit. We don't use food or teleport or anything like that, so it's just a 1 2 spec and may the best man win. Alright, here we go. 500 mil on the line, claws, prims, torture, 400 mil, and hopefully we can get some good RNG. First hit really matters in these type of fights because obviously you can two hit your opponent, so if you have the first and second hit, you can pretty much two spec them and get away without having even a risk of dying. That is what we like to see, two massive D-Claw specs, and we just made 500 mil back, so we basically profited 150 to 200 mil on top of the death, which is basically going to pay for the D-Claw giveaway at the end of the video. Now that we've got all our gear back, I wanted to go and try some other PK locations, so I headed over to Callisto to see if I could find either PKers or PVMers. Alright, so I've gotten myself into a bit of a predicament. I've been trying to get a freeze on this guy for like three minutes and I have not hit anything while well, he just completely rambled me and it's safe to say that I'm getting worked. The only way that I'm going to escape in the situation like this from at 36 wild is by getting a box or locking out because the distance between level 36 and 30 is like four freezes and I'll definitely die within that time. However, these PJ timers mean business, and I cannot hit my friend who's standing to the southwest, so my only way of getting away is by outsmarting him, outplaying him, and getting a little bit of luck. Hopefully we don't die again, because I'm not ready to go and do some more deathmatches. Oh, well, it looks like teleporting is also no longer an option. Now that has got to be one of the most insane escapes in RuneScape history. Four hit points, completely out of food, 500 mil risk plus VLS, and I somehow managed to get away. And let this serve as a moment for why you guys should be watching me over on Twitch. Every single day I do crazy stuff like this, I do high risk PKing, deep wellness PKing, and we have one of the most hype and most active communities in the RuneScape section. So if you guys want to go check me out on Twitch, simply just go to twitch.tv slash abyss, or go to the link down below in the description. I live stream every single day, so if you click on the live stream and follow, I will see you later that evening. Go and do it right now. I don't know what you guys are waiting for. I'm giving you these 10 seconds right now to go and do it because I know that you guys want to. If you're watching this video and you made it this far, you will definitely enjoy the live streams.
After escaping that tragedy, I headed over to the Chaos Altar again. This is probably the most active PK location in the new Wilderness update. It's between the KBD lair and the Ankus, which makes it a really good location for 1v1 fighting. It's also a big open area, and there's even some multi PK areas over to the west from time to time, so it's just a really good spot to find other people to fight. <laughs> The double Ancient Godsword spec was just too much momentum for him to handle, and that there is a prime example of why I love Deep Wilderness Peking. You have to manage your supplies very cautiously. If you run out of food, you have to make a way to get away for yourself, and that there isn't as easy as just clicking a teleport tab, which you can do in low-level wilderness or PvP worlds. In Deep Wild, you have to manage your supplies and manage your potions, because if you don't, you're going to get caught, and the momentum is going to build, and next thing you know, you're completely out of food and in the looting key. We got 71 mil loot from this. That's a pretty solid kill, but now I think it's time to go take a trip to the Rev Caves and see what's going on over there. Once I made it to the caves, I decided to bring the 99 Mage Skill Cape once again and give it another go using the spellbook swap technique. I found this guy named Pig Kicker who was in some pretty good gear and we fought around the Revenant Dragons in 36 Wild. And this is where we made one of the biggest mistakes. Pig Kicker was completely out of food on 50 HP, and instead of just finishing the kill, I went for the Spellbook Swap. For some reason, I didn't think that I was going to kill him, I thought that he had more food left, but it was very apparent after the fact that he was completely out, and he ended up freezing me and logging out before I could get that last hit on him. Oh man, what an L. Throughout the entire night, I had another 4 or 5 people get away from me that exact same way, but that's until I came across Hot Dog McGee. Thank you. 
Now that is a massive kill. Talk about anti-stack of the century. I saw an opening to get this kill since I knew he was in heavy pursuit and I decided to YOLO it and it ended up working out in my favor. However, when I got this kill, I noticed that I ended up getting a volatile staff in the loot key, which was obviously his plus one item, but he never got smited. He later messaged me on Discord and asked me for his volatile staff back and said that he accidentally turned off his protect from item. Now, in a case like this, I would usually give the item back as long as I'm on good terms with the person. Hotdog McGee is someone that I fight quite often, we both killed each other many times, but the Deep Wilderness community is a pretty small place and I try my best to be on good terms with everyone in this small niche of PvPers, and if they respect me, I will always show them respect in return. However, in this case, a couple weeks ago, I did kill Hotdog McGee and moments later I was stream sniped by a clan of HKers. When the HKers killed me, they ended up getting me for both loots because I had Hot Dog McGee's kill on me as well, and they accidentally left my ancestral skirt on the ground because they forgot a looting bag. When that happened, Hot Dog McGee ran up and ended up picking up the ancestral skirt, but instead of giving it back to me, which in my opinion was the right thing to do, he decided to keep it for himself, and even though I ended up killing him, he was the one who profited. Not to mention he did benefit greatly off of myself getting killed by a clan of cheaters. So in this situation, I think it's only fair that I keep the volatile staff. After I cleared out the rev cave, I decided to head back up to the altar and I wanted to try and get some more kills using spellbook swap and to my surprise, Hot Dog McGee wanted another round. So if he kills me, he will make his money back for that volatile staff. However, I'm not going to let that happen. The spellbook swap worked perfectly and honestly guys I'm thinking about making a full PK video only killing people with spellbook swap. It's actually super effective now that none of the NPCs will hit you off and after checking this key it looks like we got Mr. Hot Dog for another 42 mil. Not too shabby. As promised we're going to select one random winner from the last YouTube video who left a comment and that person is going to get a free pair of dragon claws. So we loaded up 357 comments. YouTube honestly did not push this video very much so it didn't get as many views or comments as normal. And it looks like the winner is someone by the name of Ty. He says Wild is so dead now. Literally got Scorpio Pet for free without even being attacked once in game. Name is Death Before Dishonor. Alright Ty, uh, you know the deal. You, all you got to do is message me on either Twitter, Instagram or Discord. Come to my Twitch live stream and just find a way to contact me. I a pair of dragon claws waiting for you and also make sure to check out all links down below in the description to find out how to contact me and that is it for the video today guys thank you so much if you did watch all the way through until the end honestly this is a bit of a longer video i'm still trying to figure out what i want to do as far as youtube shorts and regular size videos but 
bear with me guys i have tons of content on the way and really guys i have so many clips to upload i don't even know what i'm gonna do i've been getting so many kills lately the loot is just stacking up the bank is looking nice and really i'm just trying to get as much youtube content out as i can remember guys also i have a discord server that's really active if you guys want to join make sure to check that out in the description i don't think i've ever actually promoted it on my youtube videos so if you made it to the end of the video you're a real one and you're someone that i want in the video make sure to enter the giveaway all you guys gotta do is comment subscribe and of course like the video all the links are in the description. Check out the live stream and I'll see you guys in the next one.